Recession. It's the word everyone in finance fears. Since the Great Recession of 2008, the United States has been largely immune from these economic downturns. Outside of the massive drawdown we saw in March of 2020 due to a black swan pandemic, the U.S. economy has enjoyed a golden era of unbelievable returns with little to no trouble. Since 2010, the S&P 500 had a total return of 357%. Those lucky enough to have invested during this golden period have seen their portfolios grow well past expert assessments. Today though, trouble in paradise, a paradigm shift in markets that is making everyone, including JP Morgan, panic. In the last 12 years, investors have had essentially no worries during the epic post-recession bull run. Drawdowns were rare, and when they happened, buying the dip was an extremely profitable strategy. Since 2010, there have been only three drawdowns surpassing 15% in the S&P, and each time they happened, the market quickly recovered to new all-time highs. So given these facts, you have to ask, why is everyone so worried about a recession when the current drawdown is nothing special, at least number-wise? In the past, similar situations have always resulted in a quick recovery. Well, the answer lies in two different places, and when you figure it out, you will understand why everyone is panicking. You see, in the past, we had it easy. Each time the market dipped, the Fed was there to protect us. But after years of monetary abuse, especially following March of 2020, the protection is gone, at least for now. The Federal Reserve has a problem it has not seen since the early 80s, severe inflation. And in order to combat the issue, they need to raise rates and cut down on their help. To many experts, it seems that the era of easy money is done, and now the market will need to survive without these supplements and steroids that were being injected into it by the United States Federal Reserve. This assumption has caused a sell-off of epic proportions in speculative growth stocks. For example, stocks like Zoom have been decimated. From its peak price in October of 2020, Zoom has declined over 80%. But looking at the S&P 500, you would have a hard time telling just how bad it is out there. Plenty of retail favorites are now a fifth of what they were in 2020, yet the S&P is down only 14%. So what is going on? If there truly is a market implosion occurring, why does this single most important index seem to be holding up okay? If we are truly headed towards a recession, where is the epic drawdown? In 2008, we saw the SPY decline by approximately 50%. What is holding up the markets today? The answer to that question is found at the very top of the rankings. To many experts, Apple is holding up a market that seems to be in shambles. Its stock, while down over 14% from its peak, is the single entity preventing an index spiral of epic proportions. If Apple goes, so does the market, and while its recent earnings call was received well by most analysts, there is increasing concerns about the legitimacy of its report. According to a tweet by Meet Kevin, Apple executives were asked three times in the last earnings report to answer how demand from consumers is changing. Apple dodged the question all three times. This is indicative of how the rest of the market is behaving as well. Executives can only hide the pain for so long before changing consumer behavior becomes apparent and the real pain begins. It's also why even big banks like JP Morgan are predicting a recession. One that won't happen overnight, but will likely unfold like a slow-moving train wreck. Take a listen to Michael Forelli, chief U.S. economist at JP Morgan, explain just this. His comments should serve as a warning to all investors. Let's bring in J.P. Morgan, Chief U.S. Economist, Michael Faroli. Faroli and Santoli, I'll start with you, uh, Michael Faroli, which is, you know, it's hard to imagine that we're having conversations about a recession when, when we're adding in a tight jobs market more than 400,000 jobs and, a, and an unemployment rate at 3.6 percent. So how do you, you square that? So I think the recession, as I, at least as I understand it, the recession narrative or discussion is really about perhaps next year, not about next quarter. I think most people recognize that the momentum in the economy right now is uh, pretty, pretty favorable, as you mentioned, the jobs number looking very timely and looking very strong. Uh, but as we see these financial conditions tighten, many of what you just talked about, stocks down, rates up, dollar way up, over time, if this continues, then you set yourself up for a, a scenario where maybe, you know, a few quarters down the line, recession becomes more of a um, possibility. So as you just heard there from Michael, this all comes down to tightening. The Federal Reserve is expected to raise rates multiple times over the next year, and with that, a couple of things are happening. The dollar index is jumping up to record levels. A more valuable currency makes imports cheaper and exports more expensive and less competitive on world markets. For American companies, 
This means a tougher time selling stuff outside of its borders. And with the Fed continually raising rates, the impacts on a wide array of financial sectors are going to be severe. Mortgage rates have already surpassed 5%, and if they continue to rise, there is no doubt that eventually the housing market will grind to a halt as affordability nosedives. The fear of stagflation is overtaking the market. The economic phenomenon is a double-edged sword. On one side, inflation. On the other, recession. Rising prices hurt as is, but add in high unemployment and terrible growth and you have a recipe for disaster. Take a listen to Michael explain further. So what do you think this is all about? That, that big rally off the Fed and then the big sell-off off the Fed? Is it about concerns that the Fed's going to make a mistake or not get inflation under control or what? Yeah, the, the reaction seems a little bit sclerotic. Uh, I do think uh, perhaps Powell maybe misspoke a or was a little too firm in ruling out 75 basis points on Wednesday. Mm. And maybe some people read that as not being uh, committed enough to the inflation fight. But uh, I think that's a misreading. I think they'll do what they have to do. But uh, there may have been, you know, some words I suppose he would have uh, chosen differently. But the, the reaction has been uh, a bit odd. But I would say on net, the fact that rates are generally up and the dollar is up is probably the kind of reaction they want. I mean, eventually, they're not just doing this for the, for the sake, you know, for the fun of it. They actually want to tighten financial conditions and slow down uh, the pace of spending growth in the economy. So there you have Mr. Ferrelli essentially saying that the Fed is lying to us once again. In the last meeting, Powell essentially said that he wouldn't even think about raising rates 75 basis points. This was interpreted by some as a failure by the Fed to deal with inflation. Next week, we will get a CPI reading that will undoubtedly shape the future of this market in the near term. If inflation continues to rage, the Fed will have to make a tough choice. Essentially, what they have to do is simple, yet no one on TV would admit to this. It's straightforward. Crash the economy or let inflation spiral out of control. The dream of a soft landing is disappearing by the day, and soon Powell will have the toughest job in America, engineering short-term pain to save us from a long-term disaster. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it.